a couple of problems with this. First problem is it's so stupid. Like, as my mother said in 1979 when we got our first TV with a remote control, you can't walk six feet to change the channel? I, mean, I, I don't know why I always give my mom a Queen's accent. She's not, she doesn't talk anything like that. Um, but she's got a point. Like, where is the, the use case? Where is the thing we're missing uh, that, we, that we need you know, to operate our coffee maker from our phone? Um, the second huge problem is that a lot of this stuff is coming from little companies who mainly want to get this thing on the market and there is no security built in. The security on these things is a disaster. They are so hackable. And those of you who know whom my work, I think everything is overblown. I think the hacking you know, concerns are overblown. I think, uh, you're, I think you're worried about your children, the online stuff is overblown. I think everything's overblown, but not this. Okay, last October, you may remember, the internet went out. Reddit, Netflix, Airbnb, and the New York Times went dark because hackers got control of our Internet of Things things and brought down the internet. So it is a very real concern. The ones from the little companies <coughs> are a disaster. They don't have a security person on their staff. It's just not something they, they build in. So it's a good thing that nobody's buying this stuff because they shouldn't. Um, <laughs> so the next big problem with the Internet of Things is that you have a separate app for every goddamn piece of electronics in your house, right? So this is literally how you turn on the Philips Hue light bulbs. Unlock your phone, go to the home screen, find the Philips app, tap it. Hey, look, I just turned on the light, you know, and you're 13 year olds like, dad, you know, like you can do it like that. Um, and it's absurd. And there's a different one for every single device you have. So in 2016, the big push was all these big companies like Apple and Google, Samsung, were trying to come up with a universal app that would control multiple devices. Wouldn't that solve it? No, it doesn't. Because first of all, the apps are incredibly confusing and each one only controls a few devices. Right? It's like, you know, Betamax and VHS. Like each one knows only a few of these things. So th the Tower of Babel has now been reduced to 40 different platforms, you know, that they don't speak the same. It's a disaster. So the hilarious, amazing story of the year is the problem was finally solved by Amazon, a bookstore. What the hell? Amazon came out with this thing that no one took seriously, the Amazon Echo, this black cylinder. It's like Siri for the home, right? You put it, the, the brilliant thing about it is like your phone, you have to be up close to it for it to understand you. But the Amazon Echo has seven beam array microphones on top designed to cancel room echo. Okay, that's what screws up Siri long distance in Cortana. So. You can talk to it from across the room. You can ask for news and weather and sports and driving directions and recipes and jokes and songs. Um, but also, increasingly, people are putting uh, uh, Alexa control into their Internet of Things things. So now you can say, Alexa, make the temperature two degrees warmer in here. You can say, Alexa, play Christmas carols on Spotify. You can say, Alexa, start the washing machine. You can say, Alexa, is the dryer done yet? Alexa, warm up my car. All of these things are real and right now and really easy. You don't even need to pull out your phone. So Amazon Echo is like the camel's nose under the tent for Internet of Things. Like they've, they've solved it. The answer was never an app. The answer was voice control.